when I first started trading options, my trades went something like this. I enter a trade and start to see some profits. The trade quickly flips on me and is now red. I hold the trade hoping to get back to break even or maybe even get some profits back. But we all know that never happens. Sometimes when the trades would flip on me and turn red, I would buy more thinking like, oh, it's cheaper here or whatever, but that would just cause a way bigger loss. I was just really good at making things worse. And honestly, I still kind of am. I would lose so many trades due to that exact scenario that the next time I saw profits, I would sell just right away. Because I thought that my problem was I wasn't taking profits quick enough. But then after I would take profits, I would see the stock continue higher. And I'm like, oh my god, I just missed out on that huge gain. It seemed like my timing was perfectly wrong, if that makes sense. If you don't cut your losing trades fast enough, you will keep taking losses. And probably really big losses because you will end up full porting at one point trying to make back all the money you lost. The reason for this is your strategy either sucks or you just don't have a strategy at all. This video will turn you from a struggling trader to a profitable trader because this is exactly what I did to go from a struggling trader to an extremely profitable one. If you guys haven't already seen, I've been able to make tons of thousand percent plus options trades and I do it very consistently. Of course, I don't hit these every single day, sometimes not even every single week, but I'm able to hit them quite often enough to at least prove to you guys that I know what I'm doing. I'll put on the screen right now like a couple of my recent big trades. But yeah, anyways, now we're going to cut over to the charts and I'm going to show you guys absolutely everything that you need. All right, so the platform that I'm on right now or the program is called TC2000. The reason that I use this over pretty much anything else is just because it's like a way better tool. There's a lot more in-depth stuff. You guys can see here in the bottom right, like it's telling me where to put my stop loss, um, how many shares to buy. There's tools like all these scanners that help me find stocks. And then of course, like other tools like this, I have a whole other layout where it's showing me industries and like sectors so I can see which ones are performing the best, see where I need to be. That'll kind of all make sense in a little bit. At least like why I have all those tools and why this is so much better than any other program. But regardless, if you guys want this entire layout, I'm going to give it to you for free. So just click the link in the description. It'll be like a Google Doc where I show you uh, like step by step, like how to set it up, how to add all this shit at the top, everything. Just make sure you use that link because that's going to give you this layout. And if you don't use it, it's going to start from scratch and it's going to you know, look like some bullshit like this with no tools on it. So you don't want that. All right. So first step is going to be market condition. So the easy way that we're going to gauge market conditions is just by looking at SPY, so like S&P 500, whatever you want to call it. Um, right here on the left, I have the daily chart. On the right, I have the hourly chart up right now. Um, the hourly chart, you're not going to look at. You're just going to look at the daily to determine market conditions. So what I'm looking for is I want to see these two lines. So the purple line and the yellow line. This is the simple moving average. Um, the 10 simple moving average, and this is the 20 simple moving average. So I want to see the 10 above the 20, and I want to see both of them going up. So you can see here. 10 crossed above the 20 here and they both started to go up so that's basically a green flag so like somewhere around this day um, even though that's like a red day and it looks kind of shitty it's still a green flag there that it's okay to trade like this or at least trade this strategy the basics of it is you just want an uptrending market so if you have another way to identify an uptrending market or like the overall trend of the market then by all means go for that but this is what works for me i'm just giving you guys everything that i do so yeah like a bad example like a bad time to trade would be um, somewhere around here, you guys can see that the market kind of pulls back and then the 10 goes below the 20 and both start to downtrend or like they're declining moving averages. They kind of come back up. You probably would have tried some things here, got stopped out or didn't have the best success around then. Just this whole period was pretty choppy and shitty. But then you can see here, 10 cross above 20 and it's been like smooth sailing since. Also, another thing is right here, you'll see market goes up, goes sideways and the 10 comes below the 20. But then it crosses right back up. So you would have been like, oh, shit. Like, okay, now I can't trade this um, this strategy or whatever. I can't trade like this. But then the next day, you're like, uh, never mind. Yeah, I can. So, like, you should know pretty quick, relatively quickly at least, um, at least where the market direction is going to be. So, yeah, recap on that. If the 10 and the 20 are inclining and the 10 is above the 20, perfectly fine to trade the strategy. If the 10 is below the 20 and they're declining, don't trade it. Pretty simple. All right, so step two, this is going to be by far like one of the most important steps. They're all very important when you use them all together, but this is pretty fucking important. OK, so what we're looking for is like an area of consolidation. Uh, this one isn't going to be the best example, but on this stock, so this is where I got eighty five hundred percent was back here. Let's just use that. So this is like completely textbook. Now, I'll show you guys why in a second here. But yeah, so looking at this, okay, on the right, you're going to see the hourly of like where we currently are. Just ignore that. Um, here, let me help you. There you go. Okay, so that's a little crazy looking. All right, so 
what we have here is this is a really strong stock. How do we know it's a strong stock? Well, um, if you're not stupid, you can see. Stock's been going up forever, right? And after it went up, right, it made this huge move up. So 4.6 months, it made a 100% move on a large cap. Like, that's crazy. The stock doubled. And then after that, even after that, it was still unexpected what their earnings were. So it's like, okay. they It just gapped 24% overnight on earnings. What happened? Right after that, the stock consolidated, pulled back to the 10 moving average right here, and built this range. And you'll see, this is what happens pretty much every single time. It'll pull back to a moving average, either the 10 and or the 10 to 20. Um, and then it'll get, the candles will start to get really tight. So let's go back even further just so we don't um, like confuse you there. Uh, so what you'll see here, when this is going sideways, right, what's happening? The volume is dying out as well. So as this volume starts drying up, you can see it, it spiked here on like the earnings day and it kind of stayed high, but then came back down and just slowly dried out back to where it was. Like this is pretty much equal with where it was before. Now, what that's kind of telling us is something is going to happen or something should happen. The stock, what the fuck? The stock's not just going to go sideways forever, right? Like, that's just not realistic. And based on the trend before, where do you think this is going to go? It's pretty obvious. Like, the trend is most likely going to continue. If it went up um, 110%, whatever, in about like five months, and then reported good earnings, like where do you think this is going to go? Is the company growing or is the company shit? It's pretty obvious. It's most likely going to continue up. But we don't want to place any crazy bets or try to guess on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this day right here. So that would be breakout day. We get that thin candle, right? So right before breakout, we usually have a very thin candle. You can see here. This is an example of a thin candle. This is an example of a thin candle. This one and this one. So we got that thin candle right at the top of the range there, at the top of this trend line. And then what happens? Next day, it gaps up. So it gapped up a little bit, definitely above that trend line. And we're going to be buying it this day. And the goal here is we wait three to five days. So that'll bring us to the next step, step three, um, which is going to be like how you're going to trade this. Are you going to trade shares? Are you going to trade options? Probably options. But if, it, if it's options, what is your strike price? What is your expiration date? How long do you plan to hold this? So you're going to want to pick that before you actually are entering the stock. So on this day, right, I'm going to pick an entry or I already know where I'm going to enter it because I know the strategy, but I'm going to pick my expiration date and I'm going to pick my strike price. So if I expect the move of this to be the strongest within the next three to five days, then that depends on where this is in the week. So if this is Monday, then my expiration date's for sure going to be Friday. But if this is Friday, your expiration date is going to be next Friday because you don't have a choice. Like, that's the only choice. And let's say this is like Wednesday. It's like, all right, you got two days. Like, you're really cutting it close there. It's probably safer to go with um, next Friday and give yourself more room. Or let's say it's like Thursday or something. Like, anything later in the week, it's better to play it safer. But you can have, like, a bigger potential gain. I would say definitely don't let that bigger potential gain, like, kind of throw you off and make you choose a closer expiration when you're first trading this go with the further out expiration go with like an extra week give yourself an extra week whatever it is but for me like i can typically get these pretty close like time i'm pretty good all right so this was on june 12 2023 that was a monday so you have until friday perfectly fine to buy the contracts with the expiration date being friday so you might be like all right Where's my strike going to be? Well, that's where this tool comes in. So we have ADR. Now, in the layout link, um, I showed you guys how to add average daily range percent, which is ADR percent. I showed you guys how to add that to your toolbar. So make sure that you have that up here. But what we're going to want to do here is multiply that number by like how many days we have left until the contract. So this is, we have like five full days or well, this is Monday. So we have like four full days technically, right? So what we can do here is we can multiply this by three, just give ourselves that extra day. Um, if this was Friday, right, and then this next day was Monday, I'd probably multiply it by like three or four, maybe, probably still three. I'd say just max it out at three, but this is 3%. So on average, this is going to move 3% per day. So we have four days left until these contracts would expire, um, you know, on breakout day. But we want to give ourselves like a little bit of room, right? So if we take three times three, that's going to be nine simple math so we drag this up we see what is nine percent higher than this price that is 433 so you would have 433 calls right let's see what happens you had 433 calls where did it go on day two 430 where did it go day three 433 to the fucking penny that's the high of the day so you might be like holy shit like 
that is genius. Well, I mean, it's not that difficult. You just have to use your brain and like get a little creative, which is why I exist. I've helped you guys a shit ton. What I'm going to do here is show you something really quick. So this is now up exactly 9%. So what are we going to do? We're going to sell that shit. And you just sold the top. You just sold it at 433. Perfectly. Now we can do the same thing on the next trade. So what happens? Stock moves up and then it pulled back to these moving averages again. You sold the peak of this day perfectly. Pulls back and then it uh, starts to build this range again. Candles get really tight. So you have, you know, thin day there along that moving average. That didn't hold up. It went down to the 20. And then we got the thin day, thin day, thin day, thin day, thin day. Super, like, look at that. That can't be any thinner, I don't think. Breaks out next day. You buy it. And what do you do? So this day, you already multiply. Um, let's say this is a, what day was this? I don't even remember. All right, so this one was a Tuesday. I just had to look it up real quick. So this was a Tuesday. So if this breaks out tomorrow, that would be Wednesday. You would have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You have like three days left on those contracts. So if you multiply it by three, risky as fuck, but that's where you can get a crazy gain. What happened? I multiplied it by three. I expected that I'll show you guys. I'll put a screenshot right now so you guys can see 8,500%. So multiply it by three. What's that? 9% move again. Okay, 9% move. That's 466. So I had like something less than that. I think I had like. I don't know, something around there, right? Where does it go? In three days, where does the stock go? We said 466, it's at 481. So it added basically an extra day. You know, that day closed red. So it's like, all right, how are we going to be able to perfectly time that? Because you had, this is the last day you have left of the contract. You had to sell it on this day or it's going to expire worthless. So how can you get real close to that top? Like you could have sold 9%, right? So 9% would have given you let's call it like nine flat let's try to get that perfect so nine percent would have given you open price you could have just sold it right at open which uh we did sell a little bit at open but i was like all right you know i kind of want to hold this plate out see what happens and i've come up with a better exit now that you guys understand the setup and you understand how to choose the expiration date and how to choose the strike we'll move on to what is that number four or something of how to actually enter the stock and then i'll show you like more in depth on the exits so i was going to make this video a while ago but on this chart, I just like it won't let me go back that far. Like, let's say on the five minute, um, you know, it's pretty limited of how far I can go back. And I wasn't going to go back and show you these examples, but we got another one. So I'll give you this example where I pretty much sold the top, uh, got pretty close again. So, same setup, right? Strong stock sets up. So, our strong stock goes up, pulls back to the moving average, gets tight right there. Volume didn't really dry up all that much, but we had that thin day, uh, two thin days, three actually. Uh, looked pretty good, right? Pulled right back to that moving average, bounced on the penny, and then next day broke out. So I was like, oh shit, I bought it as soon as it broke this day's high. Um, but let's go to the one minute chart. All right, so for this example, it's going to be a little bit different, but if I just zoom in really quick, so we look at the high of this candle, go here, click on it. The high is 622.69. So as soon as the high was taken out, so I could do like a trend or like a horizontal line. As soon as that high is taken out, like somewhere around there, you're going to see here on the one minute, that's where I bought it. So what you notice, this is the, um, let's zoom in on this one minute. So this is the one minute chart. This is the first candle. So it opens there, thin red candle. Nothing really happens. One minute highs weren't taken out. Um, but what happened is it comes down, keeps going down. This is low of day. This ended up being low of day. So where did I buy it? It went up. It like came right to previous day's high like right there and then pulled back and i was like all right nothing for me yet but then i bought it here the second it broke through so that was like around here you can see the setups even right here big move up goes sideways pulls back to moving averages and then breaks out and shits everywhere you can see i buy it so i buy it here it pulls back and then i'm like oh shit is this gonna fail or not um and then it failed but it never took out low a day so your stop goes at low a day right so your stop goes at low a day. Right there. Did it take out low a day? Nope. Never, ever. So that is the perfect stop right there. You just buy it. As soon as it starts to break out of that range, set your stop loss at low a day. So now that you guys know how to enter, um, let's get into taking profits. So I was telling you guys about the whole thing where like you can sell when it's up like the average daily range amount. So this went up right here, broke out. This went up about 11.9. So that was above average daily range. So that was this day right here. If we zoom in, um, 
what I did here for this one is I go to the five minute chart. So I usually use like the one minute for entries, sometimes the five if it's slow enough. I'll go to the five for my exit. So it's like, all right, where am I going to exit this? Well, if this is going to run, like it's probably just going to continue to run all day. But it's already up a decent amount. Like the average daily range is three. It's up almost 12 again. Last time that happened, we sold pretty much the top. So I'm like, all right, what are we going to do here? Well, on this day, what happens? Stock opens. This is the five minute, right? So watch here on the right. Um, fucking piece of shit. All right, so the stock opens. It starts to go, builds this range, starts to make like a little flag, tries to break the flag and comes back down. And then it closes under this line right here. So this is the 10 SMA again. Now this is on the five minute. The second it closes under there, I sell it all. That's it. That's about a 10% move. So we're a little above average daily range. Uh, we had 640s on this because they were cheap enough. And it just worked out absolutely perfectly. And then I also bought 700s for the next Friday. So this ended up being... 695 we ended up selling those at around like 684 something like that um but still they did like 1800 percent. so you can see it really doesn't take all that much as long as you're you're um playing it right that way you choose the expiration and the strike and everything before that and then you pretty much have the plan so you just look for that setup on a strong stock goes sideways you get that thin candle it breaks out you're buying the breakout stop loss at low of day you know if it falls down below low of day it's probably shit you probably want to get rid of it and then this stock goes up so we have three percent average daily range we're expecting a nine percent move in the next like three days and what happens it has this three-day burst it makes a 12 percent move so when it's extended like that because it gapped i'm like all right well now we're going to look for an intraday close so we use this moving average right here the 10 sma when it closes under that i sell all of it and then what happens the next day oh has a shitty day and you would have lost like half your contract's value so you can't really time the bottom you can't really time the top but you can get pretty fucking close and you can make a lot of money most of you guys know that i alert some of these trades for free on my twitter but i also alert a shit ton more in my discord so if you want to check that out just go to the link in the description and yeah if you want to just follow my twitter and get the free ones or just see what i have to say uh, that'll be in the description as well if you found this video helpful in any way please be sure to like it maybe share it to someone um if you have any questions leave them in the comments i'll get back to them i usually don't get too many comments so it should be pretty easy all right thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one